This part of Chris Watts' confession which only happened in his third confession when Tammy Lee, Special Agent Graham Coder, and Detective Dave Baumhover went to Dodge Correctional Facility to interview Chris Watts once again in an unprecedented interview after he was already in prison serving his five plus consecutive life sentences. Exactly what did you say and what happened? So when I woke her up and it's like, hey, we just gotta just gotta talk. Okay. And I just like I told her, I don't feel compatible. I don't feel like this is gonna work. I just you know I don't wanna like can we cancel a trip to Aspen? And she had booked a trip that week oh. to go to some like mystery four star luxury hotel or something. Mm -hmm. Just the two of you or the whole family? Just me and her. Okay. She had a man to bear, couldn't watch the kids that week, that weekend or something. Okay. And um, I was just like, can we cancel that? Can we like do something? Like, a, from what I remember, I even said, can we move to Brighton <laughs> just to get away from like this house? Oh. But like, I'm not sure if that was like, like in the beginning or the end of part of the conversation or whatnot. It, that conversation was so many different ways. Like they had gone from like staying together to not staying together, to just like all of the above. Okay. So this is half an hour, an hour or what? Uh, uh, definitely not more than that. I don't know. I okay. I don't think. Are you crying? Is she crying? Yeah, it's it's back and forth. It's like, you know, she's, she's got, you know, mascara. She didn't wash her face when she got home. She had makeup on, so some mascara running all over and stuff like that. And, yeah, it was and nothing, nothing about that conversation. I just wish I could take all of it back. Be just a, a whole nifty thing back, everything. But. So, then when did it turn? As far as that conversation, mm -hmm. just at the end when I was telling her, like, I, I, I told her I didn't love her anymore. And that's what happened. What happened? She told me to get off her, and then I put my hand on her. Okay. Did you say she said something like that you were hurting the baby or something? So that was before that, because, like, when I was. Straddling her, it was kind of like around her waist type deal. Why did you get on her like that? I just when we got off, when we got on the bed, that's, that's just what I got on. Is that so she would listen to you? I felt like I mean, she could probably listen to me just laying beside her, but I got on top of her. Mm -hmm. and every time I think about it, I'm just like, did I know I was going to do that before I got on top of her? I don't know. Really? That's an interesting thought, Chris. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you do. Just like the whole, everything that happened that morning, I just don't, I don't know. Like, I, I try to go back in my head. And I'm just like, I didn't want to do this, but I did it. And everything just kind of like felt like you had to. It just felt like it was. I don't even want to say it, it felt like I had to. It just felt like there was already something in my mind that was implanted that I was going to do it. And I woke up that morning, it was going to happen, and I had no control of it. You never thought about it before. It was just like I don't want, like when, like like just like in the sentencing hearing that the prosecutor said it takes two to four minutes, or something like that to happen. Like why why can't I just let go? I didn't. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, just let was go. it feeling like it was in motion and you just couldn't stop it? Yeah, it was just like I don't even want to know what what she saw when she looked back at me. Honestly. Did you look at her? What was she doing? Why do you think she wasn't fighting? I don't know. It's, uh, maybe she was praying. Maybe she was just. I read, read the Bible. It said, you know, like, you know, uh, in the scripture it says, don't uh, uh, forgive these people for they do not. You know, like, like when you guys told me, like, take off your shirt and start check for defensive wounds. And, like, you know, there wasn't going to be any. She didn't fight. You know, I don't know. Why? So she didn't grab, could she grab your arms or were her arms pinned down or? I don't, not that I remember, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think like I moved to where my knees were around her arms or anything. But it was just kind of like when I got on top of her, we, we started talking, it was, that was it. It's kind of like in my head, 
for like in the back of my head that was going to happen and just like at the end of the conversation it was just like that's what happened mm -hmm. i just wish i could have let go did it seem like it was that long two to four minutes how long did it seem for you almost kind of felt like it was felt like it was longer almost because it felt like time was standing still it's kind of like i just saw my life just disappearing before my eyes, but I just like I couldn't let go. It was like somebody else, like like if you picture somebody else around you, holding your hands, holding you, keep you from not not letting go. At some point, there was a statement about rage. Do you feel like you're in a rage at that point? How do you, That's how do you the only way I can describe it, honestly. snap or something I mean, I, don't, I know I guess my attorney had said like some you know you know strangulation is more of like a I don't know passionate type thing and just like I don't know how that can be passionate it's just intimate because you're right in there yeah. Yeah. using your own hands it's a lot different than someone standing across the room and you shooting them or something like that so it just, it just felt like somebody was like behind you just like I just couldn't let go. It's interesting to me because there was a lot of things in your life that were like that, right? Where you're just like, maybe felt out of control or maybe felt like, I don't know why I couldn't stick, take a step back or, you know, like even when you said when your buddy was like, let's go to a football game. You wanted to say yes, he's good. Yeah, I wanted to. Like, I, I've never been, I've been to a football game since North Carolina, so I was just like, yeah, sure. But I wanted to say that. Yeah. I wanted to just, just text him, yeah, yeah, you know, Let's go. So, then what? Just like, after, you know, Shanann was like, once that was. Like, once I was when she was gone, I was just like, I, I didn't know what, what was going on. It's like, it was like a traumatic, I don't know what you call it, traumatic event type, and everything, and like, I was shaking, I didn't know what had happened. I didn't, know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I had done. I still wasn't in that right state of mind. I don't think like, like I was in control of what I could think or what I could do at that point in time. Like most people say, like, why don't you just call 911? Why don't you like, unless you're in that situation, you know, you, you don't, don't know. You don't know what you would have done. Mm -hmm. It's easy to play Monday morning quarterback. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Like, like I said, if somebody shoots somebody, you don't know what they're going to do in mind at that point in time. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you'd have done. So what happened next? Is that what happened? Bella came in. What she said. Oh, fine. Did she hear something? Is that what she came Obviously, in? I think. Okay. What did you tell me? I don't feel good. And then, did that happen with Bella right in that room? Not in front of her. Okay. What happened? Walked in as you know, she talking about she was she was sleeping. Mm -hmm. Did you take her back to her room? I put she had in that sheet and found the site. Okay. Then what? So I carried her downstairs and backed my truck up. At that point, were the girls still there? Okay. So then she lands in the truck, then went back to the house. We got her back in the truck. Was Bella first or was Cece first? In the truck. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. So she was first, and then Bella was next. Was Bella alive? 
before you put it, when you guys got on the truck. Oh, okay. What happened? Go back up. Okay. This is, I don't really want to talk about this part, honestly. Okay. Those are my kids. This is my baby. I have to talk to them every night. I don't see how this can Every time I see pictures, I don't know how this could have happened. Being a dad was the best part of my life. I took it all away. I think that's the hardest part for us, Chris, is we see those videos. We see that love that you had for your girls. Like, it's obvious to us. And even to us, we it's hard for us to understand how a dad who's given piggyback rides and, you know, making snacks and watching princess movies and those kinds of things. Um, how you get to that point, you know? I don't know. Just, like I said, it was just like something else was controlling me that day. I had no control over what I was like to fight back. Yeah. Like when that prosecutor said it fell a better tongue, like repeatedly, I just, I just wanted to just bang my head up against the wall. So you put Shanann in the truck, and then you put the two girls in the truck? Were they just sitting in their car seats? Or or I guess they didn't probably have car no, seats they, in your no, truck, did no, they? No, they were sitting in the back, with the, like in that, that bench. And so Shanann was back there too? Was on the floor. What did they say about Shanann being on the floor? Mommy, okay. What did you tell them? She'll be fine. Did you have your their stuff with them, with their toys and their blankets and stuff? They had they had some they had something with them that they carried. One of them, I think, at CC and Bella had like a blanket or something with them, mm -hmm. like a pink, a pink blanket. Or... What about the dog? I think one of them had a dog, right? The doctor. Dog. Yeah, 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 one of them had like a little barking dog. Was that with you too? Do you know? I think it was. It's hard to remember. Like yeah. if they had like the big blanket, small blanket. So, I think I saw um, on the video that you put a gas can or something in the back of your truck. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Did you have different plans was, when you put that in there? I don't know what was going through my head. I felt like I maybe I could just get rid of myself at the same time if I was doing all this. Honestly. Yeah. Did you think about that? What, what did you think about that? I felt like I deserved to live after what had happened. Was there any thought to um, the whole family going away that day, to include you? After everything happened, not the definite thought. Yeah. See, it's interesting to me, um, we had all kind of wondered if there was a point when you were all together, and if you were all going to pass together. That to me makes sense, because that's, even though it sounds crazy, um, that's what a family man does, right? Family man doesn't do what he did. No, I know. I guess what I mean is, um, it seems like you guys were going to be together forever in that way. Is that maybe what's going through your head? I, honestly, I just felt like I didn't, I didn't deserve to live. Yeah. I knew it was like whatever judgment I was going to come upon myself, you know. Was, I just didn't deserve to be on this earth anymore. Mm -hmm. What happened? Okay. So, what made you not do that? Do you think? I don't know if it was just more of like a, because with the, with the site, maybe it was just more of like, I would have hurt more people than just me and everybody else. Like, I know there's other people out there, not like at the site, but other people like maybe out in the area, like 
I didn't want something like on the site to catch fire and blow up. And then other people around would get hurt in the same. So you were thinking initially about starting a fire out there or an explosion or something or just no, not not for not for that, just like maybe I could take care of myself and not have been Gasoline, that's the only thing you do. I mean, I don't have like I don't have a gun, I don't have anything like that. I like to just commit suicide that way. But so just, just like, to blow yourself up. I mean it was just I wasn't thinking. Yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah. I, it was, I mean, I don't have, I don't have weapons. I don't have, I've never hunted before in my life. I don't know what, I mean, nothing was right that morning. Yeah. yeah. I remember you kept telling me that. You kept saying, I didn't know what I was doing, Tammy. I didn't know. Like, yeah, when you asked I about remember, a sheet, like, what were you doing? Like, I don't know what I was doing. Yeah. I think you were just like in automatic mode or, it seemed like. So did you st- drive straight out there? So what were you thinking on the way out there? It's kind of like what I'm doing right now. I'm just like, you know, nervous, shaking, not knowing like, you know, what's going to happen. Yeah. Like, I know like my life has completely changed. I don't know like what's happening. Like, honestly, like I try to picture that, that whole ride, like it's like 45 minutes to an hour ride out there. And it's just like, couldn't I have like saved my girl's life? Couldn't I have done something? Why did I do that? I don't know. Right. Like, this is my flesh and blood. This is, like, what I wanted all my life was to be a dad, just to have, you know, kids, and they love me, they, you know, all that. And then just nothing, nothing made sense. Right. Like, the oil tank, nothing made sense. I'm just like, what am I doing? hmm So what happened when you got out there? I took Shanann out. To place off to the site. Mm-hmm. Then, what were the girls doing when you were doing that? Just sent them back to the truck. And then what happened after that? CC was first. She did have a blanket. She had a blue blanket. A Yankee blanket. So was she alive when she went into the oil tank? No. I put the blanket over her head. And that's how she passed. Good breathe. No. I put the blanket over her. I didn't want to. No. I sprinkled her right there in the back seat. Okay. What was Bella doing? She's sitting right beside her. Did she understand? Did she know what was going on? She didn't say anything. And the same for Bella? Just without a blanket? With a blanket. Oh, okay. I didn't look. Like every time I closed my eyes, I just to hear her say, Daddy, no, and that was it. That's what Bella said. I hear that every day. You really? Sorry, man. I'm sorry doesn't really take anything in the back that I did. I know. Is it possible that in your mind you didn't want them to suffer throughout their life? Was this like a mercy thing? I mean, you can say that like after the fact, but it was just like, I don't. You didn't feel like that during I, that? I just didn't. It felt like it was just like an anger with. Shanann, with everything that I was just taking it out on everybody that was in front of me that morning. Yeah. I mean, 
kids growing out with growing up without their parents, they, I mean, depending on what grandparents or whatever they whoever they grew up with seemed to be fine, but it was just like it was an anger thing. It was just like And what were you so angry at Shinian about? Like if you could pinpoint it. Nothing that nothing that makes anybody to want to do this. I mean, you could be angry at your spouse like your whole life, but you should have never done anything like this. You should never let it get to that point. 